These are the new Chinese yukas, and in this video we are going to analyze them in detail. Why one has a lambda wing and the other has a rhomboidal wing, why one has DSI intakes and the other has wedge intakes, but most of all, why they do exist, since the US is not developing anything even remotely similar. There were only vague rumors about these UCAVs till the victory parade of the 3rd of September 2025. Now we know that they are real, which means that we can analyze them and discuss a few points that you probably won't find anywhere else on YouTube. Hi, I'm Gas, and this is Millennium 7. The Chinese presented a lot of new systems at the parade and there will be material for several videos. In this video we focus on one of the UCAVs, the largest one, and we focus on this because there is no equivalent in the West. Actually the Chinese have shown in the parade six UCAVs. One is the relatively well-known GJ-11, we just made a video dedicated to this drone, I suggest you to go and watch it, but the other five have never been seen before. And there was a 70 UCAV that, for reasons that we don't know, was excluded at the last minute. These were listed by a Chinese military blogger in a recent post and they were conventionally named Type A to Type E. The one that was excluded was likely the C. The largest aircraft being presented is known as the Type B. For lack of better definition, I will adopt this naming convention, but surely the real name is different. To be honest, this is not the first time we see it. There is indeed a blurry satellite picture where we can grasp a silhouette that should be the Type B. Maybe. The drone doesn't seem to be a mock-up, the aircraft paneling is visible and there are too many details even though some components seem not to be installed. The Chinese have declared that all the systems shown are operational. In fact, the Type B and all the other UCAVs have an ID number starting with 53 plus three other figures. This, according to the Chinese convention, should mean that the aircraft is part of the 53rd Brigade. Information about this unit is quite sketchy. The famous Chinese military observer Andreas Ruprecht mentions a 53rd subordinated UAV brigade based at Ho Tan in Tibet, but I couldn't find any other reliable reference. The general configuration is that of a stealth supersonic aircraft with no cockpit. The length is estimated to be around 17 meters, slightly longer than an F-16. The empty weight should be around 7 tons and the maximum takeoff weight should be around 16 to 17 tons. However, being a stealth aircraft, the payload should be housed internally, so the practical takeoff weight should be much less. There are no vertical empennages like all the recent Chinese fighter designs. The fuselage shows the classic stealth chine with a section resembling other Chinese stealth designs. The bottom is flat and this is becoming a hallmark of Chinese stealth. The wing is rhomboidal, which doesn't really mean anything special in itself. It could work like a delta wing or like a conventional wing with aerofoils with a very high taper. Most likely it is a hybrid of the two, but the leading edge is quite thin, suggesting the creation of a system of vortices like the delta wing does. Most notably, the wingtip seems to be entirely mobile, as we have seen on the J-15. This solution seems to be another hallmark of Chinese designs. I still have to wrap around my head on the aerodynamic of the mobile wingtips, but at some point I will get there. The wing also has four mobile surfaces whose function is probably a mix of flaps and ailerons. Please note that at the bottom of the wing there are actuator housings, which means that the Chinese still don't use thin actuators. Furthermore, please notice that there is no hinge line visible, so the aircraft cladding should be flexible as we have seen with the J-36. I can't see any leading edge high lift device, and since some modern Delta's maneuver slats are practically a must, this suggests that the focus of the aircraft is not on air combat maneuvers. Compared with the Lambda wing, 
on the Type A drone, this is a more versatile wing, while the Lambda wing is a design more apt for high supersonic speed. We will discuss this in another video when we will cover the Type A. Now let's go from nose to tail and let's have a look at the details. There seems to be a radum on the nose of the aircraft, the panels are of a slightly different color and of a size consistent with the presence of a radar. However, I don't see the typical radum serrations of stealth aircraft. It seems smaller than the average fighter radar, so it could be a new model that we don't know of. Right behind the radum on the left side, there is the air data sensor that is, it is a pitot tube. On stealth aircraft, they are usually made of plastic, for obvious reasons. Right before the nose wheel housing, there is the typical electro-optical sensor used by other Chinese fighters. In this case, though, it seems that the sensor is absent and there is just a placeholder. This would suggest that the aircraft is a prototype being tested by the PLAV. So, technically, it is in service, not just in combat service. Clever. The undercarriage hatches show the typical stealth serrations and the configuration is quite conventional. It seems to have a single nose wheel, so this is not a naval aircraft fit for carriers. The air intakes are the SI intakes with the bump slightly off-center like on the J20. The shape is an irregular polygon which is consistent with stealth. The choice of this type of intake suggests that the aircraft is expected to operate at transonic speeds rather than a high Mach number. In fact, these intakes have their maximum efficiency around that delicate Mach 1 transition. At speed above Mach 1.2, 1.3, wedge intakes like those on the Type A drone, the one that we have seen just beside the Type B in the parade, well, they are more efficient. Above the aircraft, right behind the intakes, there is a transparent micro canopy, which in all likelihood contains a camera to look around. We don't know the degree of autonomy of the aircraft, but either a human remote pilot or an autonomous system needs a sensor to look forward and around the aircraft. And since the EOTS is under the nose, some visibility above the aircraft was needed. There is also another bump visible in the same area. This time is not transparent, but there is no picture good enough to see any details, so I don't know. Right behind the intake, there is a sensor that resembles a similar item seen on the J-20. These are missile approach warning systems, but on this unit, they seem to be either absent or covered. Some recent information supports the idea that this sensor could double as a system for 360 degree awareness, similar to the F-35 DAS. On an uncrewed aircraft, this would surely be of great help, both for a remote pilot or for an automated system. At the intersection of the wing with the fuselage, on the left side, there is a small air scoop. Usually these intakes are used to cool the aircraft internals, suggesting that there is plenty of electronics inside the fuselage. I would expect that the radiators of the various internal systems are placed right below this intake. The warm air may exit around the nozzle, as we will see in a minute. We don't have a clear view of the belly of the aircraft. From a few lines that are visible in some pictures, we can speculate the presence of weapon bay hatches. There should be a lot of room to fit a weapon bay, but we just can't see it. The aircraft features a single engine, the nozzle shows serrated petals, which suggests that it could be a WS-15 engine. That is, the new high-performance engine for the J-20, with a thrust up to 180 kN with afterburner. The fuselage around the engine is serrated as well, and it shows a gap which is probably the exhaust of the internal cooling air. This is a solution seen on various stealth aircraft already that helps reducing the engine infrared signature. On this subject, there are two long appendices on each side of the nozzle. Their immediate function should be a partial concealment of the exhaust plume from the side. But it seems that the tip is of a slightly different color, so there may be a sensor placed at the tip. So, at the end of the day, 
What is this aircraft? Why did the Chinese build a fighter size UCAV? The equivalent American designs for the CCR project are much smaller. Surely it is not an attritable vehicle, it seems sophisticated enough that you don't want to lose them in scores. However, nothing forbids for these aircraft to be designed to operate loyal wingman style. The larger airframe should be capable of matching the performance of a fighter jet in every respect. Therefore, the Type B could be a more versatile companion for a combat aircraft. And probably it is even more stealthy than man jets. I obviously don't have proof, but I suspect that the Type B is a weapon carrier to complement a manned air combat component, either the current J20, J35 mix or the future J36, J50 mix. For example, consider a flight of J35s armed with air-to-ground weapons to hit a target that requires some judgment before hitting. They could be working as a team with a group of Type B, with the UCAVs ensuring the air-to-air -air coverage or delivering anti-radiation weapons to open the path. The alternative is that the aircraft is designed either to be a completely autonomous aircraft, and this would be very sophisticated, or to be just a remotely piloted aircraft, and this would be much simpler. I don't expect the latter to be true, honestly. It's sort of an old technology, but the former, though, is a very tall order. I mean, considering the speed of development that we are seeing in China, I wouldn't be surprised if they manage a software breakthrough to make full autonomy reasonably possible. Anyway, at the moment we can only see to see pictures emerge on the internet of the aircraft in flight or on the ground in the coming months, which could give us a better idea about the role and the features of this aircraft. So, thank you very much for watching this video. It has been a an honor and a privilege having had your attention. An enormous thank you to all those who are supporting the channel on Patreon or by being a member or by any of the other means available. You are absolute stars. Without you, all this would not be possible. And if you can support the channel financially, please subscribe if you haven't or interact with the video. Leave a comment, hit the bell, hit like, Suggest the video to someone else who could be interested. All of this helps with the algorithm. This is the end for this video. There's plenty more to come. Thank you very much for watching and see you next time.